Hi, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to add an approval to a ticket automatically. Uh, in this case, we're going to be working with refund requests. So to do this, uh, you can uh, create an approval in the Approve app by clicking this icon and under Approval Definitions, click on Add Approval Definition at the top. Then we can add a name here. So we're going to say uh, Refund uh, Approval Request. And this is where you can set who is going to approve uh, the, uh, the the data in the message here. So by default, it's set to a requester, but I can change this to essentially select any user, uh, like so. Uh, users or the approvers do not need to be agents in Zendesk, so they can be any uh, user in Zendesk uh, that you want to send it to. You can have multiple approvers in here as well. Um, so if I do a search here for uh, Harriet, uh, I can add her as well. And then you can set the required number of approvers uh, to say that needs to say yes before the approval is considered granted. Um, now you can, uh, not limited to, to users, you can add groups uh, or anybody relative to the ticket here. And you've even got this advanced uh, functionality here where I can kind of uh, specify uh, the approval uh, flow to look at a Zendesk uh, lookup field where um, you can essentially search for users in an email address or a text field where the email addresses might be typed out or even a drop down field. Um, but for now, we're just going to keep things uh, fairly simple. So here, like I said, you've got a required number and then you've got a timeout um, uh, as to how long it will, the, the approval will wait for these approvers before the uh, approval is considered um, you know, timed out. So if we set it to one hour, after one hour, uh, it'll, it'll time out. But then we can also set in escalation steps. So if uh, Jeff and Harriet do not get back within one hour, then you may wanna send them, uh, for example, a uh, reminder, which you could do simply by adding them to the second uh, escalation point, like so. Um, uh, uh, and you know, you can, you can create as many escalation steps as you want. But then once this uh, has passed, you can actually have multiple steps. So at the top right hand side here, I can add as many, a few steps. So I might have a step for managers uh, and I might have a step for finance. Um, and then under finance, I might, you know, choose the Zendesk group finance like so. So lots of things you can do with uh, your different steps, escalation steps. Uh, you can kind of uh, create a whatever flow uh, you need in order to make uh, the approval go through to the, the right people. Next up, we have the message. So the message allows you to create and refer to the contents of any specific uh, ticket fields that are pertinent to this approval. So if we have a look at this uh, ref uh, requesting refund that we're about to send off, uh, it's a native Zendesk form where we have some uh, custom uh, ticket fields like order ID, date paid, amount paid that we can refer to in the approval. So we can do that by clicking on the plus on the right hand side here and say, you know, order ID search and we can add those in date paid uh, and then uh, amount sorry amount uh, paid like so um, and then we can kind of create our approval like so um, Next up, we can choose, I mean, there's, we can add as many fields as we want here, but you get the idea as to how you add the fields by this plus icon. Next up, we can set the fields uh, to be uh, mandatory in that I can't send this approval off before I've filled out these fields. I can also disable these fields if um, uh, as soon as the approval has been sent to ensure that other agents don't come in and alter the data in those fields. I have the option to have an approve uh, decline and an abstain button. If uh, you turn the abstain button on, then uh, you know what that means is that if I'm requiring one of two approvers and Jeff clicks on abstain, uh, then you, it, it takes him out of the race, and so you've only got one of one, uh, you know, one approver left. Now, if Harriet was to abstain at two, then that would take him. This step below the threshold here, which is saying one is required, and it would move uh, 
either up the, the escalation point or if there's no approvers left uh, to be able to be escalated to, it would time out. Uh, down here, you've got the ability to uh, set who has permission to automatic or sorry manually apply this, uh, but approval approvals can be also manually uh, sorry automatically applied via triggers as you'll see in a sec. And then finally, uh, ticket updates, and this is a very powerful section of the app uh, where you can actually do anything to the ticket. Uh, based on any status of the approval. For example, if the approval was granted, uh, then I could add a tag saying refund uh, approval granted. If I wanted to record the date at which the, the approval was granted, I could update that too. Now, you do have some uh, global settings uh, in the app as well. So uh, keep keep a, keep a mind uh, on that, that they exist, um, but you are also able to set uh, t specific ticket updates for specific uh, approval actions on uh, each individual approval definition. So uh, once you're happy with the, uh, the data in your approval, then you can click OK and that's going to create it. Uh, now we're ready to test it out, but um, maybe we want to have this uh, approval down here that we've just created automatically applied to the ticket the instant it's created. So the way that we can do that is to click here to create a trigger uh, and that is going to uh, create a Zendesk trigger um, ready for us to click into. Uh, and uh, alter the conditions to essentially apply the approval when we want it to be applied. Uh, by default, it's looking for tags that don't exist. So we'll just remove that and say, when the ticket uh, is created and the form, form uh, is a refund, then the uh, approval is automatically applied like so. Now you do have this URL parameter. So if you want the approval to automatically be applied but not sent, you can change this to false and that will allow the agent to fill out extra details before it's sent off. But if you are certain that at the point that this trigger is going to fire that you're going to have all the data that you need in order for the approval to take place, then you can just send it off straight away and keep that send to true. I'm going to leave it as false and now we're going to test this out over on our ticket that we got ready to uh, create. So I'm going to create this uh, refund request uh, ticket. Um, our uh, uh, trigger will have fired now uh, to automatically apply this approval as you can see. Um, we've got a two-step approval. It's going to be sent to, to these two agents initially uh, and in step two it's going to be sent to the finance team over here. Um, it is requiring these three fields to be filled out. So we can do that uh, like so. Date paid uh, over here and amount paid, something like that. When I submit as open, it's going to record that data in uh, the approval message uh, ready for that to be sent. So that is how you can create an approval uh, flow or an, uh, with, within the approve app. Uh, let us know how you go uh, and if you've got any questions email them through to support at sweethawk.com. Thanks for watching.